Hello everybody. Look who I've got with me today. Can you believe it? I asked my husband Les if he would come on here with me and lo and behold he said that he would. I'm not used to doing these horizontal so I got to make sure I'm looking at you and not where I normally look. So um, yes my husband Les is with me today and um, I am going to ask, he's only going to be here for just a few moments um, to say hi to everybody and I am then going to share a little bit with you about repairing the breach and um, what the Lord has done for us. But any of you who know Les, you know that this is um, pretty incredible that he's on here with me. Um, he's a very shy guy, um, but he is the most precious man that God ever created. And I am blessed to be his wife. So, do you have anything you want to say to anybody? Hello, everybody. May Jesus be in your hearts. Amen. He is a precious man. And so um, he is going to take off. I told him, even if you can just be here for just a few moments, um, I was going to be blessed by it. Because only the Lord knows what that takes for him to be here. So thank you so much, honey. I love you. I love you. Bye. See you in a little bit. All righty, everybody. I am going to be sharing here a little bit about repairing the breach. Um, how the Lord um, healed our marriage back in 1990 and 1991 was when our valley um, happened. And um, it was not a fun time, but it's literally the foundation of our marriage now and our children, how they learned to know um, God's character and what God is able to do. So um, Les is such a shy man. Those of you who personally know him, you know what it took for him to just pop on here that long. And he's not a talker. For him to even open up his mouth and share words takes a lot for him. But see, it is just a tiny example of what God has done in that man over these years as Les has just continued to allow Jesus more and more to have access to his heart. And um, I, when I said that I am the most blessed woman, that is exactly how I feel. How he has put up with me is actually in itself um, a mighty miracle of the Lord. And I thank the Lord Jesus for what he has done in our marriage. How he saved our souls, both Les's and mine, back in 1985. The fall of 1985, we both got born again. And um, five years later is when the valley, we were blessed to go through the valley. But, um, and those of you who um, have liked our um, repairing the Breach Marriage Ministry page. You know, you, this booklet probably looks familiar to you. It might be backwards, but everything is free. We don't charge anything. We have literally put our entire booklet on our um, Facebook page, and we have it on our website for everyone to have access. It has down the scriptures that God led through the valley how he guided and direct, guided and directed. Um, he healed our marriage, of course, but it was a um, walk of faith because by every look in the natural realm, the devil was winning. Um, Les had filed for divorce. He abandoned um, Kathy and Lathan and I three different times. We were um, had to leave our home. And move out. Um, and yet even at that, you can read in our testimony how the Lord guided through the word of God as to what God was doing and how it would end. And um, it took a year and a half. Um, but the Lord was faithful. Now, you have to remember, I didn't know it was going to take a year and a half. Um, for all I know, I, I mean, I, for all I knew, I remember thinking it could be 20 years. The children could be full grown, but God will have kept his word. I remember thinking that. 
So it wasn't the time. It was realizing that it was for the salvation of my children, the salvation of myself. If I would not have believed God's word, I do, I do not believe at all that I would be walking with the Lord right now. Um, so it was a salvation issue, let alone for where Les was at. Um, many, many tried to tell me that God would not have um, required me to have stood for my marriage, um, that God had someone better for me. And we're, we're meaning, I am meaning, pastors told me this. Grown adult Christians told me that. That God would not require that of me because less was in adultery. Um, and yet, what God was telling me is, Cindy, are you going to believe the words of a mere man? Whether it was less saying, I don't love you, I want a divorce. I should never have married you. Or whether it was of a pastor and year, I mean, 30-year-old in the Lord Christians telling me that God would want me to move on. God was saying, who are you going to believe, Cindy? The word, words of a mere man or the word of Almighty God? And guys, I wish I could say that it was just, you know, I had all the faith, you know, that there, but no. It was painful and all I knew was I had everything to lose if I did not trust God. Everything to lose if I did not trust God. But what did I have to lose if I trusted him? I'd already lost what is seemingly to be my family. My husband, who I had thought that we would grow old together. So what did I have to lose to just trust God? So that's what, by the grace of God, and when I say that, I mean it. He was my backbone. Jesus was my cheerleader. He was my anchor. It took every day just plain clinging to him, allowing him to heal me each and every day, not letting today's pain go into next, the next day's pain because it would have like calloused over and made me hardened. So it was crying out to God every day for that healing that I needed desperately each and every day to forgive. But see, and I share this in, in our testimony booklet, is because we have a question and answer um, in our booklet too. And remember, it's free. There's nothing that just go to our website or right here on our um, Repairing the Breach page and you can read the whole thing. But see, it appeared, of course, as though Les was the one in sin. I mean, here he was, shacked up with the adulterous woman and looking as though he was the most horriblest father, leaving his children, leaving his wife. And yet the Lord said to me from the get-go, Cindy, I have as much work to do in you as what I do in Les. So it was a walk of salvation for us. And it was more precious than anything on this earth. More precious than gold. No money could buy what God did in us during those years, for our, during our valley. And he has kept his word. He has not only healed our marriage, but uses to his glory our children, our precious daughter, Lena, Kathy, and Lathan, and now our grandchildren, Lexi, Ethan, and Cammy, uses them for his glory. Preaching the old paths, which is what he promised in Isaiah 58. That's where the repairing the breach comes from. But I said all that to wind it down to this, that Jesus Christ, every one of us, have broken the breach. We 
have a gap between us and God Almighty, and we are all destined for eternal damnation. Jesus Christ is the only one that has repaired that breach if we repent of our sin and come unto him. He will then be that peace between us and the Father. Here in Isaiah 59, 1, the word says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. I remember thinking of that scripture. Lord, do you really hear me? Do you really, are you really able to do this? And he would remind me, am I not the creator? Have I not given breath to less? Do I not hold your breath in my hand? If I am able to create, can I not save? Can I not hear? I gave you your ears to hear. So let's not shortchange God as to what he can do and wants to do, but he needs faith. Those who will believe that he is able and wants to. We sometimes push the hand of God. Have you ever been there? That's why waiting on God, having patience is so vitally important. It has to be in God's time because he knows the perfectness of it all. I remember in the valley, the Lord, you know how I've told you how he uses analogies with me. And he used, I called it the baked cake analogy. That you can have the most perfect recipe you can have the most perfect flour and sugar and all the ingredients for a, a, a perfect cake. You can preheat the oven, have it on the perfect setting. You can whip that cake batter up, homemade, perfectly done, to the tilt that you have followed, every jot and tittle. You open up that oven door, you put in that cake, you close that door up, you are going to have a perfect cake, right? You open it right back up, you pull it out, and you're perturbed. All you have is a soupy mess. Now, you followed the directions. You did everything that was said to be done. Now, and this is what is left of it. Just a mess. Who can even use it? It's just a soupy mess. What was left out? It was the time that it took. That is how vitally important it is. We can do everything that we think is right, but it's got to be in God's timing to just rest in him. That is faith, trusting that he really is able to see it all the way through. It's us not calling the shots. It's us resting in God Almighty, believing that he really is able to do all that he says. So, when we follow the real instructions on waiting unto him, we put that cake in and we allow the time. That is when the chemical that all of the heat and the, the, it literally transforms inside that oven. When that bell goes off, we open the oven up and then we have that perfect cake where many can then indulge and eat it and find satisfaction and use of it. That is what God wants to do in the things that he has for our lives that seem to be such horrible trials at that moment. We need to do the magnifying of Jesus when we are in those times. That is what his word will do. Let's read here in Ephesians 2, 13 through 18. 
But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of of Christ. Now we're talking about how Jesus is the true repairer of the breach because every one of us have a breach between us and the Father. And that was us. We were far off, but Jesus has made us nigh through his blood. Let's go on. Verse 14. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Oh, glory. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereof, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the repairer of the breach. He is our salvation. Hallelujah. Let's look at 1 Timothy 2 5. For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Yes, he is. And let's see. Did I read Isaiah? 30, I think I did. I, that's Isaiah 37, 6. I want you to read that. That is, oh no, I didn't. Let's read that one. Because this one, you know, the words that we hear, whether we go to a, a doctor and a doctor says words, um, whose report are we going to believe? Well, you know, when, when those words came at me, I don't love you. I have never loved you. We never should have gotten married. We were too young when we got married. The kids will be able, will be just fine. Kathy was 10. Lathan was 7 at the time. They'll be just fine. He said, he, Les told me, he goes, oh, um, lots of kids go through that. And they'll be fine. Which just cut my heart. I mean, it was a live living pain. Those of you who, who have been through that, you know what I mean. It was a real terror of the one flesh. You could feel the pain. Um, but God used Isaiah 37, 6, this one little phrase in there, be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard. Just those words from the Father being said to me, don't be afraid of those words, Cindy. Whose word are you going to believe? The words of a mere man or the word of Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus, that he was our anchor. Um, he, his word is what saw us through and healed our family. And by the grace of God, we are blessed to see the hand of God using our family. And there isn't anything greater that we want than to be used by the Lord. To see souls saved, that is our, our greatest desire. Father, I thank you. I pray, Lord, anyone who would be watching this, that they would feel your presence. And Lord, the pain, the words that have went forth to hurt, that you, Father, would give them the encouragement that only you can, that your word is more powerful than anything they see anything they hear, that you have the last say. And that, Father, that to increase their faith in you, to mute the voices of the enemy out there, and to magnify your voice in their heart, in their, in their spiritual ears, and increase our faith, Father, to believe you no matter what is set before us. Father, I pray souls to be saved. And to this day, Father, those that would be relying on their own strength 
that they would just rest back in you. Not try to push the arm of Almighty God because that's the arm of our flesh flexing and we will surely grow weary and faint. But as we rely upon you, trust you to be in sovereign control as we trust you to work out your plan in each one of our lives. Father, you will strengthen us. You promise that those who wait upon you will rise up in strength. Father, be blessed and be glorified this day in everyone's life who would watch this later. And Father, I pray a special blessing upon your servant Les. Father, you knew what it took for him to come on here. I pray that you would use it to bless him for it was a true blessing to me. May it be to all those that watch. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless each and every one of you.